Continuing our series in configuring social networking, this video we're going to have a look at configuring my sites in more detail. So I head back over to Central Admin and then to Manage Service Applications. And once again into the User Profile Service Application itself. Down here at the end, we have My Site Settings. If I click on Set Up My Sites, we can see what's been pre configured for us when we configured and created our first User Profile Service Application. First of all, up the top here, it's put in a pre existing search center. It's gleaned that from the one we created when we created our search service a little while ago, and it's pasted that in for us. Further down, it's selected a useful scope for finding people and a useful search scope for finding documents within it. Underneath that, we then have the My Site host location. And here it's pasted in the URL of our web application we created specifically to host the My Site host site collection. At the same web application, there is a managed path called slash personal under which all of the actual my site site collections will be created when users elect to create their own my site. We can also specify the my site host URL for specification in Active Directory. This allows Exchange clients like Outlook and mobile clients when they pass a username in the form of an email address and a password. It can also discover various things, including their mailbox. It can also discover the my site host URL for that user. We also have our personalization site location, in other words, the managed path under which all the my site site collections actually get created. The format that we've specified, which is domain underscore username. Language options, can the users choose their own language? And read permission levels. And this says, from here on in, any site collections created for users my sites will have these users granted read access to everything therein. Now, if I change that here, of course, it won't affect any existing my site site collections. This is only for the as yet uncreated my sites. As I go further down, security trimming operations, we can specify security trimming options such as when a user shares on purpose or by accident a URL, any of those that appear on the my site will be checked such that the end user viewing the other user's profile will only get to see the links they have permission to open. Alternatively, we can say check only specified links for permission. We can also enter more complex URLs to be displayed regardless of what permissions the users have. In other words, if a user clicks on one of those, it's going to say access denied. Then we have show all links regardless of permission, which is perhaps not the best thing to do. Imagine if your CEO tags a document called, I don't know, redundancies or something like that. The last thing we want perhaps is to cause panic by having that document visible when anybody views the CEO's profile. We can also enable or disable activities in the news feeds and whether we should support SharePoint 2010 activities. Then what email address should be used to send notifications to users, so my sites at sharepoint.com or something. Then whether email should be sent out for notifications to users when their newsfeed has changed. And a new setting in 2013, my site cleanup. This behavior has kind of been around for a while, but this says when a user leaves the organization and their Active Directory account is deleted, instead of just deleting all the users' My Site stuff, the user's manager will be made the primary owner. We can also specify who should become the secondary owner, so we could put in Spadmin to always be the secondary owner. Typically, upon deletion of the user account, you've got 14 days grace before the site collection will be marked for deletion. Now, we still play by the rules of the recycle bins in SharePoint, so if a site collection gets deleted, it goes into the site collection gradual delete queue and only is purged by default 30 days later. So we have an additional 30 days to claim that site collection back using restore-sp-deleted-site if we need to. The last setting on this page is make my sites public. And this is really talking not so much about the my site personalization site, the site collection for each user, but rather the information on the user's profile and news feeds. Do we want users by default sharing without perhaps knowing that's what they're doing, who follows them and so on. So by default, it's private. Now what we could do is say, make that public. It depends upon how we wish that information to be used in our organization. Then I can hit OK. Having a closer look at the MySite settings, we also have Configure Trusted Host Locations. 
This is particularly useful if you have many farms distributed across different geographies. Maybe you have one in Europe, one in Asia, one in the States, and each one might have its own MySites infrastructure, a MySite host. And imagining that you have a sufficient WAN pipe linking them all together. Next, imagining that users have access to each of the location's farms. Then what could happen by accident if I'm a European user and I visit, I don't know, a foreign farm and I accidentally go up to this menu up here and go to about me or click on my name, it's going to potentially create me a profile and if I'm not paying attention, a my site personalization site as well in that farm. That can lead to there being several versions of, of effectively me, my information distributed one in each of the farms that we have. Rather than do that, we can configure trusted my site host locations to say, The my site's host at this URL with the following title is going to be visible by the following audiences. Now we're going to have a look at how to create audiences in a subsequent video, but audiences effectively allow us to say if you have this in your job description or that in your pick another property here from your user profile, then you are in a named audience. So I can pick, for instance, all authenticated users there's an audience for that and this will now mean every user in this farm gets to see this as their my site host if i go up here it'll be targeted to everyone now in a multi-farm scenario you would put different my site hosts and a suitable audience that defines each one so for instance you'd come up with an audience called usa users let's say and European users, Asia users, and in the European farm, you would target USA users and Asia users at their own local MySites host. Of course, then you'd have to go into each other farm and set up the equivalent operation there for each of those host locations too. So going back to user profile service under MySite settings, we also have managed promoted sites, and this has a much better name than it had in 2010. This allows me to target particular document libraries, particular sites, and have them show up as a useful link in people's my sites. One frequently recurring question when we have a lot of my sites created is how can I get my way back home? How can I find my way back to the intranet? So maybe intranet.contoso.local. There we go. So this should place a link to our intranet on everybody's user profile. So we can see that by now pretending to be an end user, going up to our user profile page, up to the sites link up here, and we can see the intranet is now a promoted site. Clicking here will take us, of course, to the intranet. Going back to manage user profile service we can see we also have published links to office client applications and this allows me to target once again document libraries and particular sites by audience not in this case to their sites list but to actual office save as locations so if i put in a link here to the intranet slash shared documents I could then select an appropriate type such as document library and then target everyone or particular audience. And now in a while after various timer jobs have run and after a, a synchronization has been allowed to happen, the next time somebody opens up Word and saves as, they will have shared documents library here as a save as location. Going back to user profile services again, we have manage social tags and notes. Now this hasn't changed significantly since 2010 and this allows me to search for particular terms that particular users have been using as tagging and noting. So for instance I can select a user and what I'd like to do is to hit find but unfortunately, there's a few extra things. I'm going to have to specify a URL or a date range or something that we're searching for, which is a shame. I can't just see particular words or I can't just see 
if I have a hunch that somebody's doing something wrong, I have to have a tip off that's a particular user or a particular URL and then to search for those terms. Having then found those terms or keywords, I can then remove those keywords from the term store and remove anything offensive that perhaps people have been tagging documents with. Next, going back to user profile service again, we can also go to manage following. And of course, the more people that users follow, the more documents and sites that are followed, the slower SharePoint would become when you look at a user profile. So we can put limits on that, and limits are around the 1,500 mark. So these are the default thresholds. We could increase that if we have a particularly fast farm. These are same default values that, unless you're certain that your farm has enough capacity, you wouldn't increase those. So that concludes most of the user profile service application configuration for my sites. However, we should also take a look at our web applications. So going into manage web applications, here I have the my sites one. An important part of the ability to create my sites is self-service site collection creation. As we can see, this has been switched on automatically for us using the built-in site collection signup page. We can then override which quota is to be used, which quota template, so I can pick personal site. And this way, the create a new site collection link is hidden from users. They don't know about it, they don't need to. When they first go visit the profile page, and they then click on a blog, or they then click on their content tab, it's going to start the creation process for them automatically. What we could do is configure a custom form for the creation of people's my sites. The reason you may want to consider this is, well, effectively, we're opting people in automatically without their express consent when we create their my site personalization site it might be a good idea for some organizations to have a terms and conditions page saying this is what you're getting yourself into this is what we require of you if you're going to have your own my site on our farm so in this module we've had a look at configuring my sites in sharepoint 2013 this ends the video